Today we're going to talk about the digestive system that we have. The digestive system divided in two divisions. The first division uh, is the gastrointestinal tract itself. Uh, and the second division, digestive system two, will be on accessory digestive organs. Uh, in part uh, one, digestive system one, we have three parts to it. We have part one has to do with the cells of the digestive system. Part two has to do with the oral cavity, esophagus, and stomach. And then part three has to do with the small and large intestine. Enjoy. Digestive system one, part two, oral cavity to the stomach. We want to look at the epithelium and the uh, makeup of the organs of the oral cavity through the esophagus and into the stomach for part two. Uh, here, one of the things that we want to do is understand our general organization of organs of the digestive system. And we want to see how uh, they function to uh, obtain nutrients necessary for growth and for energy for the body, but yet maintain a barrier between the environment and the internal milieu of the body. So really what's in the digestive tract is really on the outside of the individual. It's just going through uh, the individual. And so it's got to get the nutrients out, but maintain a barrier for the internal milieu of the body. Now, the GI tract does three basic things. One, it moves food uh, from one area to the other. It starts with the mouth, ends up at the anal end. Uh, it's also secretions. It secretes digestive juices. It secretes mucus. Uh, secretions, it secretes enzymes. Uh, secretions for digestion to occur. And so you look for secretory glands. Just like up here, you're going to look for smooth muscle, which is important in movement of food. The third thing is the absorption of food, electrolytes, and water. And so you're going to expect to see uh, a high amplified surface area for absorption to occur in the intestinal absorptive cells along the way. So the GI tract is adapted for specialized function. And the esophagus simply passes food from one portion to another to the stomach is a function of the esophagus. Uh, also, uh, storage of food and feces in the stomach or the distal colon. So we don't have to eat all the time. We don't have to defecate all the time because we can store these uh, along the way. Uh, also, digestion occurs in the stomach and the small intestines. And absorption in products is largely in the in the small intestine, but also in the proximal colon occurs. So different portions of a GI tract are specialized for different functions. And we want to look at the makeup of these that facilitate these. For example, the esophagus. Simple passage from one food to uh, one place to another. If you ever swallowed uh, something hot, you can literally feel the heat in it the heat going down through the esophagus, going down to the stomach. Uh, and so you can realize that it's a, a quick passage uh, from one location to another. <laughs> so we have the oral cavity, we just have the esophagus, uh, the stomach. So some of these are all part of the primary digestive uh, system, namely it's a tube in a digestive tract. There's also the accessory digestive organs. you got the salivary glands, the teeth tongue, um, uh, other types of glands. you got the liver, the gallbladder, and pancreas. All these are as, uh, accessory digestive uh, organs uh, which uh, amplify the, the functions of the gastrointestinal tract, which is largely a, a, a tube that goes through here. And we can see that tube uh, in through there. On the outside, you have uh, mesothelium. On the inside in the lumen you have epithelium, you have connective tissue, uh, and, and smooth muscle in through there. And we can see it's largely a tube. This shows you uh, how it looks in the small intestines versus uh, the large intestine with a series of muscle layers. Uh, and uh, here we see the serosa. And if we look at that at a higher magnification, you can see uh, the mesentery is hanging down 
GI train uh, hangs from the mesentery. Uh, and then we have the serosa, which is the, the, the cuboidal cells of the uh, meso mesothelium in through there, and then some connective tissue that's the mexocerosa. And then inside there, we have the muscularis externa. So this is a muscle layer on the outside. If we go back to the inside, uh, we can see the epithelium, the epithelium lined inside. And then we see a lamina propria. A lamina propria is connective tissue to the epithelium sits on. And in between the epithelium and the muscularis mucosa. Here's a muscularis mucosa. And so these three things, the epithelium, uh, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa, makes the mucosa. So uh, if this is a mucosa, then this is a submucosa. And sometimes the submucosa has glands. In the duodenum, it has glands. Uh, in the esophagus, it has glands. In the submucosa, otherwise the glands are located uh, in the lamina propria. That's where you have the crypts uh, of lubricant or the intestinal uh, crypts that are in through there. Now you also have nervous cells that regulate the control of the smooth muscle. You've got the Auerbach's plexus uh, in the outer uh, layer between the outer longitudinal inner circle layers of the muscularis externa. And then you have the Meister's plexus, which is in the submucosa, and this regulates uh, the muscularis mucosa, as opposed to our box regulates the muscularis externa. Lymphoidal tissue can be seen in through there. You see the inner circle, outer longitudinal muscle. Uh, you see uh, the crypts of lubricant or the mucosa glands. Uh, that are in the test and iron box plexus. And also you see uh, uh, excretory ducts from large glands. This is coming from the liver or coming from the pancreas that comes in through there. And in the small intestine, you have villi, intestinal villi. You should call them small intestinal villi because you don't have villi in the large intestine. You only have those in the small intestine. Sometimes you have infolding of this of the, of the submucosa. When this unfolds in through there, that's the pikey circularis, amplifies the surface area uh, that we see there, intestinal villi that we see. So we have the serosa, muscularis externa, submucosa, mucosa, which is composed of the muscularis mucosa, lamina propria, and epithelium that we see on the surface. So we started the oral cavity. Uh, this is skin on the outside of the lip. And this is the lip here. We have stratified squamous uh, epithelium. In both cases, not uh, keratinized on the surface uh, near the skin and non keratinized in the oral cavity. Also, we have the tongue. Stratified squamous epithelium is what we have, but there are different types of projections. You got the filiform projections, and the function of those is to grab and move food under the teeth so you keep chewing. And then there's a, a fungi form. Uh, which have uh, taste buds in the apical surface, no taste buds in the filiform. Their function is to move things. But the, uh, also there's a foliate. Foliate has taste buds on the periphery. These are the taste buds right in through there. We can see those uh, taste buds in through there. They have different cells. There are support cells and the cells that, uh, that actually uh, causes uh, the the uh, the taste to occur, and then also there's a valate type of papillae, and they're located right in through there, and these are the ones that have the glands of Abner that washes this out, and so there's different types of of uh, papillae. There is the um, filiform, fungiform, foliate, uh, and then the sarcovalid. And here we can see there's muscle into their skeletal muscle in the tongue because we have regulation of that muscle, skeletal muscle. And you can see this stratified squamous epithelium with these different projections uh, in through there. Uh, the ones that some of them are characterized, characterized uh, those are the uh, filiform. They, they do not have taste buds, but you do have taste buds for the other epithelium, lambda propria muscularis uh, mucosa. Uh, and this is a cutaneous, mucous cutaneous interaction between the two, where you have skin goes into uh, the oral cavity. Uh, you have uh, epidermal-like epithelium, 
uh, and you have the different types of uh, papillae, as I mentioned to you before. All of them, uh, with the exception of the filiform, uh, have taste buds. Uh, some of them are in the apex, some of them on the sides, uh, but they do have taste buds. But this, uh, this one, the filiform, uh, its function is simply uh, to move the food, grip the food. If you've ever been licked by a cow or by a cat, you can feel these projections. So we can see those again. There's adipose tissue, as we see right in through here, glandular tissue with uh, serous and mucus type glands, uh, and the taste buds uh, in the sarcomvalid, uh, one that we can see with the glands of Ebnerby here to wash out these. You can see another circumvalid with the taste buds uh, on the periphery and through there, glands of Ebner located there. We can see that these are the glands of Ebner, serous type secretion that washes this out. So we can see their lymphoidal tissues of the tonsils in the oral cavity, right off the tongue, uh, serous and mucous glands in through there. The serous gland secretion contains a lipase uh, that prevents the formation of a hydrophobic film on the taste buds uh, and that would hinder uh, you be able to taste things uh, if if uh, you had a film on top of there. Uh, and here we can see the different layers in the upper part of the esophagus. You don't have a serosa, you have an adventitia. Adventitia is where this structure is firmly attached to the wall. Uh, as opposed to a serosa, you have uh, these as mesothelium that allows sliding and movement uh, of the gut within the wall itself. Muscularis externa, submucosa, mucosa, which is uh, muscularis mucosa, lamina propria, and epithelium that we see on the surface. Again, we can see the epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, non keratinized. Uh, uh, the muscularis mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa. Uh, and then you would see the abdomen tissue in through there. There is the Meissner plexus and the Arbox plexus that are located uh, in the esophagus. Here we can see the esophagus. This is the uh, epithelium on the surface uh, and the muscularis external submucosa right in through there. We can see the submucosa uh, and you see the epithelium, uh, the muscularis externa. This is smooth muscle. Uh, especially as you get down uh, toward uh, toward the stomach. And then uh, the stratified uh, squamous epithelium abruptly comes simple columnar epithelium uh, of the gastric one. You can see stratified squamous abruptly changes um, uh, in the stomach uh, to, um, uh, to a simple columnar epithelium. Uh, and we can see uh, some of the cardioesophageal uh, glands uh, in through there. So this is the stomach and this is the esophagus. Esophagus, stomach right in through there. Uh, you can see the cardiac, some cardiac glands in the cardiac region, the first region uh, of the of the stomach. Simple columnar epithelium. You see some lymphoidal tissue in through there. So uh, in the stomach, there's three different regions. You've got the cardiac region, which is mostly a mucus type secretion. You have the pleuric, which is mostly a mucus type secretion, and the fundic region. Uh, the fundic region is where you have the different cells. You have the chief cells, the parietal cells, the mucus neck, sur the surface mucus cells, and the argentifan cells located in through there. So that's a cardiac is mucus, pleuris is uh, mucus, and then the fundic uh, region or the corpus of the body is where you have these different cells. So you have surface epithelium, you have cardiac glands uh, in through there, you have the gastric glands in the fundic region or the pleuric glands. These two are mucus and then this is the one that is uh, hydrochloric acid secreting. So here we can see the gas, the, the, uh, the cardiac glands, a mucus type secretion, and then we can see the cells, uh, the mucus neck, parietal cells, into endocrine cells, the chief cells, Surface mucus cells, surface mucus cells, you see the PAS positive here. Also in the neck region, you can see the PAS positive cells of these cells. Uh, and then the parietal and chief cells are down in through there. And remember, the neck region is really the neck region because it comes down a pit and then that branches. So this is simple branch tuber gland. Uh, and here are surface mucus cells. 
uh, parietal cells, these big pink cells that we see in slide 56, uh, and then the surface mucus uh, cells as we see, mucus neck cells, uh, chief cells in through there, and there's the parietal cells, and you have the muscles, larus externa, and the box plexus. Uh, here we see another fundic stomach. We see the gastric pits running here, uh, and then the gastric glands right in through there. And here we can see uh, the parietal cells, the bigger cells here, uh, and then you can see the surface epithelium, the mucus neck cells in through there, parietal and the chief. The chief are more blue. Uh, the um, uh, the more pink ones, uh, bigger ones, are the um, parietal cells. And then if you get to the pleuric region, you have a mucus-type secretion again. So your mucus secretion, you can literally see the branching that goes on right in through there. Simple tubular branch gland. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the mucus neck cells uh, have PAS positive staining. They're carbohydrate-rich. Uh, as well as the surface mucus cells. And then down through here, your parietal and chief cells. So these would be, I uh, can't tell which is which in that low magnification. Uh, and so you get out of the stomach, uh, you get a mucus type secretion in the pleuric region, and then you get into the duodenum, and these are the Brunner's glands that we see there. So we come through the stomach, and this is the small intestine or the duodenum. So characteristic of epithelium in the stomach and intestine. In the stomach, you got simple columnar, mucus secreting, glandular secretion, uh, glands within the lamina propria uh, you would have. And then um, you have a cardiac uh, and pleuric glands that are located in through there. In the intestine, you have simple columnar, uh, microvilli gobbit cells, uh, and glands in the submucosa of the of the duodenum and the and the mucosa uh, of the of the intestine. So we want to thank a host of different books uh, uh, from which uh, images uh, were uh, modified uh, for this presentation. We want to thank the sources, original sources of the some of them papers, some of them websites, and some of them were textbooks so that have been uh, widely used. Uh, that's the end of the digestive system part one, part two, which is the oral cavity stomach. The next part, we will talk about the small and large intestines.